What's going on YouTube? It's your guy Darren, man, the Bowtie Fragrance guy on this channel. We talk about fragrances and we talk about fashion as well. So if you're into uh, fragrances and also fashion from the standpoint of trying to improve uh, your style game uh, to some extent, then this is a channel for you. I recommend you go ahead and consider clicking the subscribe button, especially since it's free. It's not going to cost you anything. <laughs> and take another quick second to click that bell icon as well to make sure when I upload new content on the channel, you get notified. So guys, on today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a run through of my top 10 Jerjoff fragrances in my fragrance collection. Now, I will say I've smelled a lot of fragrances from this house. Um, I got a lot of samples of a lot of different fragrances from Jerjoff because uh, as I always advise you guys to do when I am looking at delving further into a fragrance house, where the fragrances are more expensive, I, I like to sample the fragrances first to make sure that it's something that I'm going to enjoy. A lot of times I rely on just looking at notes uh, in fragrances and I'm, a lot of times I'm pretty accurate on something that I feel like I'm more than likely going to enjoy. But again, when we're dealing with fragrances that uh, get into this price range of a lot of Georgia fragrances, I like to sample first. So I've had a lot of samples. Uh, some of them uh, turned out to be fragrances that I wasn't, I didn't really like enough to get a full bottle. One that I thought I would love based on the note breakdown was Mamluk. And uh, once I got a sample, ah, a little bit too skanky for me. Wasn't, didn't really vibe with it, so I didn't pick it up. Now I will say these fragrances in my collection are uh, ones that I've sampled first. And of course I liked it, got, got them in the collection, added them to the collection. There are a few that I haven't smelled that I think maybe potentially could have made this list. And I just wanted to mention those fragrances really quick. Uh, Pico Valladama is uh, one, also La Capital, and Richwood. Uh, Richwood is another one that I haven't had a chance to get my nose on yet, but I'm pretty sure I would really like those three fragrances. So once I'm able to get those in my collection, then maybe we'll come back and you know revamp or re revamp this list, but we'll see. And guys, the House of Jerjoff, if you you know don't know much about it, it's a it's a luxury. Uh, niche fragrance house and one thing that they do well two things that they do well is they give you quality fragrances and they give you some very very uh, unique fragrance offerings and that's something that I really really love and again as I said before really uh, embodies uh, niche fragrances and uh, speaking of that I mean, if you guys haven't heard of course I'm going to be coming out with my own two fragrances and that's something that I really really uh, learned during this process uh, the quality of ingredients that we use in these fragrances are top notch. And that's something that you guys are going to be able to tell when you get a chance to put your nose on these fragrances. I wanted to do something that uh, was really, that gave some complexity but wasn't overly complex. So they, could com so they would have the chance to really appeal to a wider variety of people. And I wanted to make sure that my fragrances didn't smell like anything else on the market. And that's something that we were able to accomplish as well. One of the key elements of that is the quality of the essential oils that were used in these fragrances. You're going to be able to smell quality through and through. I mean, come on, you, you guys expect anything less from me than something of high quality? I hope not. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I am very much uh, into representation and quality is very, very important to me. So that's something that you're going to see when you get a chance to put your nose on these fragrances in my collection. Now I was able to work with two very well-known uh, master perfumers. One of them, if you guys are probably going to be really, really surprised, but man, look, I'm just so excited about this. And like I said, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be getting more and more into uh, some of the specifics as it relates to my fragrances. But I'm sure as my subscribers, I know what you guys like. And of course, I'm going to deliver. All right, guys, so now that we got that out of the way, we're going to be go ahead and jumping into my top 10 fragrances from the House of Jerjoff. So if you want to see what made my list of the top 10 Jerjoff fragrances in my collection, you know the routine, man. Keep it locked right here. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. We're going to jump into uh, this video on these 10 fragrances. There's a lot of different collections from Jerjoff. Uh, 
I'm gonna try to see if I can remember a lot of them off the top of my head. We have the Shooting Stars collection, we have Ooh Stars, we have Join the Club, Castle Morati. Uh, they have a new V collection. There's a um, Stone Label collection, um, 1861 collection as well. Uh, so there's a lot of different collections uh, within this particular brand. And I think I have uh, quite a few of them represented on this list. The first fragrance on the list, so this will be in the 10th spot for me from the 1861 collection. This one is called Renaissance. This one is called Renaissance. And it's in the 10th spot for me, but I do really, really enjoy this fragrance. But it's really, you know, one of those fragrances that you get, you would have to really love, uh, like that kind of petit grain, the roly uh, vibe. It opens up with a nice crisp lemon accord, and that combines really nice with the petit grain up top. And when it dries down, it really becomes a kind of warm fragrance. It has amber in it, uh, woody. You get the a, a nice woodiness uh, on the base with cedar wood in this one as well, and a nice musk note. So again, it's a nice fragrance, but again, when you start talking about complexity and originality, there's other fragrances in my Jerjoff collection that I enjoy more than this one. But again, it's a really, really nice fragrance for the spring and summertime. So in the 10th spot, it goes to this one right here from the 1861 collection. This is called Renaissance. All right, guys, the next fragrance on the list coming in at ninth spot uh, in my Jerjoff collection. This one is from the Join the Club collection and this one is called More Than Words. More Than Words. And what I love about this one, of course, it has one of my favorite notes, rose. You get that nice rose oud combination, uh, which of course, if you guys have been following me for any amount of time, you know I love fragrances that have rose and oud. Now this one also has some labdanum in here, but what I like about it is it doesn't go too heavy or too dark in resinous uh, because there's a beautiful um, fruity accord in the heart of this fragrance that really keeps this fragrance a little bit sweet. And I like that because again, it doesn't go too, too rich, too resinous and dark as the fragrance starts to dry down. But man, I really, really enjoy this one. Um, again, it's just for me, I, of course, because I love that combination of rose and oud, I have so many other fragrances in my collection that I uh, have that have that same combination of notes. And so for that reason, that's the only reason it's at the ninth spot, but it's a darn good fragrance. So check this one out. Uh, this one is called More Than Words. Guys, now coming in at the eighth spot on this list, you know this list is fire if this fragrance only makes the eighth spot. I think this is from the Oud Stars collection and this one is called Alexandria 2. Alexandria 2. And this fragrance, man, I love it because it has the that apple and cinnamon vibe. You get apple in this, you get some cinnamon, you get vanilla as it starts to dry down, a nice, beautiful, creamy sandalwood note uh, in this one as well. Ah, oh, this stuff is so good, man. And again, to me, that just tells you how good this list is, is if Alexandria 2 comes in at the eighth spot, you already know I got some heat coming right around the corner. So, man. If you like fragrances, again, like me, that have that apple cinnamon combination, this is one that you need to check out. This stuff is absolutely delicious from the Oud Stars collection. I think it is, or Shooting Stars. Um, this one is called Alexandria 2. All right, now coming in at the seventh spot on this list, we're going back to the uh, Join the Club collection, and this one is called 40 Knots. 40 Knots. Now this is such a complex fragrance. When I see a lot of people talk about this fragrance, they, they're not sure where they want to put this fragrance as it relates to what is the best season or even sometimes the best occasion to wear this scent because it is so complex and it changes so much. Uh, there's, some, there's a green element to this fragrance. There's a woody element to this fragrance. It's salty, it's aquatic, it's resinous. It just depends on what phase of this you catch this fragrance in as somebody is wearing it. So with that being said, it really can be worn year round. It is so good and so complex. But again, that can be said for a lot of fragrances. Most of the fragrances, as a matter of fact, on this list. So that's why it's only in the seventh spot. Again, from the Join the Club collection. Oh man, this is good. Guys, this one is called 40 Knots. All right guys, next up on the list, coming in at the sixth spot on my in my judge off collection this is the the best the prettiest bottle in the collection and it smells good as well this one's called herba pura 
Herbal Pure. I will tell you, if you get this bottle, make sure that you don't, when you get yours, it's not leaking. Mine was leaking and it kind of messed up uh, the backside of this beautiful, beautiful kind of velvety uh, texture that you get on this bottle. But man, this stuff smells good. This is like the, I would say out of all these, this is like a clubbing fragrance because it's so, it's so sweet and playful, but it smells so freaking amazing. Citrus, fruits, vanilla on the dry down. That's really what this fragrance is about, but it is uh, really, really sweet and fruity when it opens up a succulent uh, citrus opening, um, blended just to perfection in this fragrance. But it's not really overly sweet, and that's the thing I love about it, the right amount of everything in this fragrance, and that's what you wanna find, that kind of combination. But this one is really, really good, guys. Check this one out. Get your nose on this from the House of Jerjoff. Again, this one is called Herba Pura. All right, guys, coming in at the fifth spot on this list, another fragrance from this collection that can teach a class on how a fragrance should be well blended and transitioned from the Casamirati collection. This one is called 1888. 1888, man. And just simply put, this is a masterfully done fragrance. This stuff smells like, like you've heard a lot of people say, it smells like root beer. I get the root beer from this. It has a gingerbread accord in this as well but the star player is a beautiful floral carnation note. Now, we have some sandalwood that comes in on the base of this fragrance just to really, really round this thing out and give it some creaminess, but it is blended, as I said, to perfection. I love this fragrance. Everybody should at least put their nose on this, even if you don't like this kind of scent DNA, because I really wouldn't call this a mass appealing scent DNA, but it smells absolutely amazing. But it will really give you an idea of how a fragrance should come across when it's masterfully blended and high quality ingredients are used in it. So check this one out, guys, from the 1888 collection, from the Casamirati collection, I'm sorry, this is called 1888. All right, guys, coming in at the fourth spot on this list, this is, I've said before, the probably the best citrus fragrance I've ever smelled, and this is called Giorgio of Neo. Giorgio of Neo, and this one, of course, comes from the Shooting Stars collection so alexandria 2 is the ooh stars collection this is the shooting stars collection and neroli petit green orange blossom beautiful beautiful citrus opening of this fragrance and that's what this one is really all about as i said before i really feel like this is the best citrus fragrance that i've ever smelled because again i talk about this all the time a lot of times citrus notes can be real really volatile and uh that means they don't really last alone they really burn off really quickly uh, but the, the citrus notes and the floral notes in this fragrance, just you can tell the, the quality uh, ingredients that was used in this particular scent. And guys, it really, really makes a difference. And if you're a person that loves a nice citrus fragrance, then this is one you, I would say you have to experience. That's why it's so high up on the list for what it is, because it's so well done. From the house of Jerjoff, of course, from the Shooting Stars collection, the fourth spot on this list goes to George off Neo. All right, guys, now coming in at the third spot, we're going back to the Shooting Stars collection, and this one is called Kobe. This is called Kobe. And man, this one just edged out Neo for me from that Shooting Stars collection because this one is more unique. This is more unique. Uh, now, I will say you have to be a lover of Neroli to appreciate this fragrance because if you don't like Neroli, more than likely, this may not be one that you can enjoy because it's a Neroli bomb in the opening. It has an aroli petit grain orange blossom. And it dries down to a nice, really complex fragrance that still is sweet, but not overly sweet. You get some tonka bean in this when it dries down and benzoin. Uh, those will probably be the main two notes to my nose. But guys, this is a gorgeous scent. So if you have a chance or an opportunity, please put your nose on this one. Again, this is called Kobe. All right, guys, now coming in at the number two spot on this list, you guys know I love gourmands, and this is definitely the top, one of the top three gourmand scents I've ever smelled. From the Casamari line, this is called Italica. Italica. Now, recently they've changed the presentation on uh, this bottle just a little bit. All the fragrances from the Casamari line have undergone somewhat of uh, a change or a revamping. Uh, but I love this presentation and the nice velvety texture of this bottle. This is an amazing fragrance. Again, if you love gourmands, this is something I think is, is really, really mouth-watering. It's so good. 
I think it has almond, it has toffee, caramel. Um, oh man, there's a really creamy, milky sound of wood in this one as well. This is just an amazing gourmand scent. Again, definitely top three. I have a few in my collection that I really need to sit down and think about this, which would be number one, two, or three. But this comes to mind, uh, Angel Share, Black Phantom, uh, Sweetie Oud from uh, Rosia. Some of the best ones off the top of my head, but man, this is definitely in the running. It's just really, really sweet. It's not really that, that much of a practical fragrance, but man, date nights, cold weather. Check this one out, man, from the house of Jerjoff again. This is a gourmand lover's dream. This is Carl Italica. All right, guys, and coming in at the number one spot on this list, this fragrance comes from the 1861 collection. I'm sure you know what it is. This is called Naxos. This is called Naxos, and I absolutely adore this fragrance. Again, some of my favorite notes in this, you have cinnamon, you have honey, and you have tobacco and lavender in this as well. A lot of people compare this to Pure Havana, but again, that lavender really made this uh, made this fragrance stand out if you want to really just compare those two head to head but my favorite scent from the house of George off is this right here love this scent for what it is again beautiful scent has some of my favorite notes in perfumery all in one bottle and with that being said it's really hard not to like this one so probably one of more one of the more popular scents from the house of George off but it's one that definitely in my humble opinion is one of the best that they have to offer. So check this one out from the 1861 collection. This is called Naxos. All right, guys, that's it. That's my time. I hope you enjoyed this video today as I gave you my top 10 fragrances from the house of Jerjoff. As always, I appreciate your time and your attention to these videos because of course, you guys could have been anywhere else in the world, but you're right here with me and I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget guys to take a few moments to uh, like, comment, subscribe, and go ahead and share these videos out to folks that you think could use this information or they may find me entertaining because I'm your guy, Darren, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Peace.